Uh, my name is Vivek Singh and I've worked at Intel for almost 20 years now. And I started out, uh, you know, doing simulations in the lithography area. And it was sort of uh, good luck um, uh, that uh, this area turned into something that uh, the industry needed uh, very critically. Um, as lithography steppers have run out of gas a little bit, you need all these fancy tricks to uh, continue uh, the march of Moore's law. And it turns out that things like optical proximity correction, double patterning, inverse lithography, source mask optimization, these are all things that require lithography modeling. So Intel has a very nice uh, pipeline that goes from research to pathfinding to development to manufacturing. And really, uh, for before you start producing a node in high volume, you really are working on it eight to 10 years before that point in time. Uh, initially, you're trying out everything. It's pure research. And in fact, you're working with a lot of um, other parties like professors and national labs and things like that. And once the research phase is over, then you start pathfinding. Now you have some viable options or you think they're viable and you are sort of um, going through them. And by the end of the pathfinding phase, you sort of know roughly which type of thing you're going to do. Uh, and you still may have some material choices, some process optimizations left to do, and that's development. And uh, this is sort of a well-oiled uh, machinery at Intel. And uh, the last two years of it is development. And uh, you are going from a point where you typically don't have much of a yield and ending up when you have uh, you know, what are some, some pretty impressive yield numbers. We are really lucky that we have, uh, we have the template of Moore's Law to sort of guide our actions. You know, Moore's Law says that every, every two years you have to develop a new technology node, and uh, we follow that. Now, we don't follow it because uh, Dr. Moore was a founder of Intel, but uh, because it makes total economic sense, uh, not just for our shareholders, uh, but f ultimately for the customers, uh, for the consumers who get a lot of choices, a lot of new technology, for not just the same price, but for, you know, uh, a, a better price. So um, Moore's Law basically uh, has said that it makes sense to do a new node every two years or so. And um, we just sign up for a new node even before we know how to do it. And, um, and uh, we get two years to debug, uh, uh, debug it. And um, so uh, come thick or thin, we sort of just keep um, forging ahead. So when it's two years, you know it's time to release it. Uh, you better be done by that time. OPC stands for Optical Proximity Correction. And uh, uh, for those who don't know, um, it is a means to invert the problem of forward imaging. Forward imaging says that I want to print two rectangles. I put them in a mask, shine light through them. But what happens is because of diffraction effects, these uh, rectangles don't quite print properly. Their corners get rounded, they merge into each other, they, they are not clearly resolved. So you try to find the structure or shape that you actually do put on the mask such that um, the right thing prints. Now, as Moore's Law keeps on going, uh, optical diffraction becomes more and more severe. So you need a little, a little niftier trick, you know. Um, and so the trick with pixelated uh, mass technology is to not just restrict yourself to moving out or in the edges of the rectangles, uh, just in other words, not just distorting the rectangles, but saying, hey, I've got a sea of pixels. The whole mask is a sea of pixels. What configuration of pixels is going to result in the optimal rectangles being printed? And maybe smaller, closer rectangles being printed than you could do just with OPC. So that's the essence of uh, you know, pixelated mass technology. Litho equipment in particular um, you know, started to run out of gas, like I said before. Um, in the old days, whatever designers gave us, we could make. Uh, slowly, as the path of Moore's Law continued, things became smaller. And there wasn't always uh, the ability uh, in our steppers to keep shrinking these things 
in a photographic string sort of way. So you had to figure out what features could be printed and what could not be printed. While still keeping the general uh, thrust of Moore's law, uh, twice the number of functionality every two years in the same area, you know, alive. And uh, so that really required designers to work closely with uh, lithographers to figure out what could be made and what could not be made. And I think that's been the essence not just of keeping Moore's law going, but also of uh, design for manufacturability. Somebody at Intel, uh, maybe Craig Barrett said, you can't uh, save your way out of a recession. Um, Moore's law says that consumer, uh, consumers are always going to like the better functionality, more features, uh, more, more economic solutions that they, they're going to get. And uh, whether the market goes up or down, that underlying trend uh, sort of runs, runs supreme. So um, we've got two years to debug a new technology and um, it doesn't really matter whether the market is going up or down, you sort of have to invest in the future.